Hi, I'm Yannick Hanfman. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Dennis Kudler. This is Sebastian Ofer. It's Mark Andrea Wessler. I am Francisco Serundolo. And, and you're listening, listening to the Game to the Podcast. podcast. Hopefully you enjoy it. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> the biggest Novak Djokovic fan on the oh, planet, God. I would say. Uh, I know that there's a few other people claiming this title, but I think we agree and most other people around the world agree that you are the biggest Novak Djokovic fan because we see you at nearly every event uh, <laughs> when he's playing. <laughs> No, I, I, I'm going to start straight away. No, no, I'm not taking that title. I don't think it's a title to have. You know, I don't think it's a hierarchy. I think I'm very visible. I'll take that. Um, but, you know, like, we can't all travel. You know, for years, I was not able to travel. And yet, I used to consider myself a big fan back then anyway. So, you know, I, I, I'll take the very visible Novak fan. <laughs> so, so when Julie's not going to watch Novak Djokovic... What kind of things do you like to get up to? <laughs> what kind of things I like to get up to? Yeah. I've got a life, you know, it's just I don't <laughs> care. <it. laughs> um, I mean, I, I love uh, spending time with my friends. Uh, I love writing. I love, you know, at the moment, I'm, I'm really starting to get into running as well. Um, nice. I'm, I actually, I've just made a list because I in 2024, there's a list of things I want to do. And I want to get back into boxing because I used to do some Ooh. boxing in the past and I used to enjoy it a lot and I miss it. I want to go back into singing. I used to sing as well, you oh, know. Brilliant. But my job is very intense and busy when I'm at work. So, you know, when apart from, you know, a little bit of regular workout when I'm not um, and social media does take a lot. I definitely spend too much time on my phone. Um, but yeah. Um, there's a lot of things I do right now. I've got loads of notebooks. At the moment, I'm proofreading a book from my friends. So a friend of mine has written a book that she wants to publish, and I'm proofreading it. So that takes a lot of my time. Um, yeah, I, I chat a lot on the phone with my family. <laughs> but there's definitely a lot of things, you know, that are not tennis-related, but people don't realize that because they just don't know me. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, especially in the sort of tennis space, whenever anyone sees an image of you on the TV or they see your name on Twitter, instantly it is Novak Djokovic. And we do see you around at a lot of events. So how do you how do you manage to get out there to so many events with work and other family commitments? Well, 2023 was a special one. It was an exceptional one because I had what we call a sabbatical. So I had the first oh. three months um, nice. of the year of work. Um, where I did some research about languages and about how languages are being taught in other English-speaking countries. So I, I studied that in Australia and um, USA. But of course, people just see me you know, at a match, but they don't see the 10 other days where I'm in a school and I'm you know, working and talking to fellow colleagues from Australia or USA. Um, so that's why 2023, you saw me so much because I... Like this year, I'm not 2024. I'm not going to go to. I went to Adelaide. I went to Melbourne. I went to Dubai, and then I actually went to Miami. Um, even though Novak wasn't there, so that's four extra tournaments that you know. Um, um, I I'm not. I usually don't go to, but um, I'm in a teacher in a in a private school in the UK. Nice. So I do get a lot of holidays, more than state schools. Um, so, you know, there's a few moments where, um, for me, it's, you know, compulsory where I'm going to see my family, like Christmas is always the one. But otherwise, you know, I, I made that very conscious decision back in 2018, um, just after Novak injured himself the first time, yeah. where I was like, I want to see Novak as much as I can. And it's true that with the years, it's grown into something bigger than I thought. Like, you know, I want to go more because I feel like, because Novak is so kind, you know, and so worth it of, of supporting that I feel like I want to give back more. And, you know, and then it's it's like a, a circle, you know. Um, but also because I love traveling, you know, before traveling for Novak, I was already traveling, starting to travel Europe because that was the cheapest, you know, um, in 2014, 15, 16, you know. Um, 17 as well. But 17, I started going, actually, I started going to tennis in I saw Novak for the first time in 2016 and, you know, that's when I was like, oh, I, I have to go more. I can't just, you know. And then 2017 when he got injured and I went to New York for the first time 
to visit New York. And obviously I went to the practice week of the US Open and obviously Novak wasn't there because he was injured, you know, in 2017. And then I was just like, oh, it doesn't feel right, you know. So 2018, I was like, okay, we're starting. Um, and I think also with COVID, that increased my feelings of wanting to travel more um, because I'm like, we never know what can happen. And also, you know, I said, imagine not that I know anything and not that it's happening, but imagine Novak retires tomorrow. I don't want to have regrets of being like, oh, I should have gone there. He's not. He's not. Just to be clear. Everyone. Don't, don't do that Panic to us. Off. This is an exclusive. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, 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 don't be. Imagine the, the clip that you would have by saying, Maybe no, we'll just click, we'll kick the whole podcast and just say, <laughs> Julie announces Djokovic retires. <laughs> oh, no, don't, because then I would have, I don't know how many people like insulting you or whatever. Um, but yeah, and I think COVID actually yeah, increased my will to travel even more, just, you know. But not only for actually for tennis, also to socialize more, you know, like to to try different things because I'm I'm like, what if there's something else? You know, what if as well? I, unfortunately, I've seen many people who, um, you know, I've gotten sick or whatever. And I'm like, what if something happens to me or something happens to someone in my family and I can't do it anymore? Basically, I my motto is what if tomorrow everything has to stop? Um, I want to be like I've lived my life to the fullest. So that's what I'm doing. And, yeah. you know, I'm doing it with my own means. Um, sometimes I can't go to some places. Like, for instance, so people were like, why are you not in Malaga the Davis Cup for the semifinals? Because after Paris and Torino in November, I couldn't afford it. You know, that's as simple as that. But And then you've got some people like, oh, you're at way too many places. And then I had some people telling me off, why are you not there? And I'm like, what on earth? <laughs> like, you know, it's difficult sometimes to, to read some comments from some people. But, you know, more and more, I'm like, nah. There are, you know, things that are far worse in life. I'm I'm living my best life with the way that I can, you know, and that's it. I, I want no regrets, you know. Everyone is free to do that. Everyone is free to literally work their <clears throat> off and then save the money and do whatever they want, you know. I, I'm single. I have no kids. Literally, there's only me to think of. I have that luck. I'm using it. If people are not happy... You know, it, yeah. it should. I mean, be you up. should never ever worry about anyone else's opinion. I think from the outset, looking in, you're living a very uh, great life, which is you're able to travel. You're doing all the things you love and enjoy, not mm -hmm. just with Djokovic, but traveling, meeting exactly. people along the way. I'm sure over the exactly. years you've met so many other Djokovic fans. Yeah. Uh, but what I want to do this is rewind. As well, I think you know that's that's you know it's not only about Novak. It's also about the adventures because you know yes, I go to tennis a lot, but at the same time, I do sightseeing. I do meet people and I do meet like the way, not that I was not open-minded before, but I always say that, you know, supporting Novak has opened doors to me that I never thought were possible, but also my mind, because I've met so many people with so many stories, with so many backgrounds from literally from all around the world. And it's so enriching to be honest, like on a, on a human perspective, it's great. Like it's taught me lessons and, you know, negative lessons as well. But, you know, it's taught me so much. And if we was to rewind to 2016, when you first went to watch Novak Djokovic, what was it for you which made you think, OK, this is the guy I really like. This is someone who I want to get behind and be a big sort of fan of. Oh, I was before. I was a fan 10 years before. OK, oh. so it's been, you've which, always been a fan. Which was the first match then that you watched him in and thought, Live? No, this is the guy. Well, yeah, Live, just yeah. on the telly or... Oh. Oh, no, on the telly, so I discovered it. Um, discovered him, sorry, um, on the French television in June 2006, where uh, French Open, he had just retired against Rafa, like withdrew, so withdrew against Rafa, where well, retired from the match, um, two sets down. And then Novak said in a press conference um, that Rafa was not unbeatable, even though Novak had withdrawn against him two sets down. And the French commentators, I was revising for my, um, my A-levels, um, the beginning of my A-levels in, in France. Because, you know, in France it's over two years and I was one year early in my studies. So I was 16. And I remember it's caught my eye, my eye and my ear because the commentators were sort of making fun of him. And at the same time, Novak was wearing a French jersey because it was the World Cup, football World Cup. Okay, yeah. And that's it. That's when I was like, I was like, hmm, he's saying Rafa's not unbeatable. And the hype about Rafa was so huge. And no offense to anyone, but the hype from me was zero like you know i was just like runs too much like honestly sweating so much which i found like it's it's really useless not useless but 
um, um, reasons that are not great of why I didn't like him. You know, I'm nothing to do with tennis. But I was just like, Mah. you know, and I was like, there was this guy who was kind of killing the vibe, like, you know, and I was like, oh, who is he? And I literally can picture myself then going into the sort of office we had in the, like the, the second bedroom that was the office. And um, I checked on, you know, the computer we had in my house in 2006. And I was like, who's Novak Djokovic? You know, and that's it. That's when it started. So, and then in 2016, I was like, how come I haven't seen him live yet? But what you have to keep in mind is that I also have another idol, another big love is music. And I go to loads of concerts as well in my free time. Oh, um, so you guys as British, do you know McFly? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so McFly is my, my, it's thanks to them I learned English. So Tom from McFly is my other idol. Like I admire him so much. And one day, by the way, I'm manifesting this. Him and Novak are going to meet. It is going to happen. Like, you know, on that day, you can quote that. Um, And if they um, they do meet, are you going to be there as well? I I truly hope so. (laughs) You've got to, imagine how bad it would be if you was looking online, you saw them two meet and you wasn't there. I mean, that would be the worst thing. Why the same way of happiness, you know? I would be like, oh my gosh, they're fed. But they know of each other because I made sure they do. So okay. I offered to Novak some um, books from um, Tom, because like, you know Tom writes books yep. for the children. So his kids have loads of books from Tom. And actually, once it was really sweet because I offered one to Novak in New York a few years ago, I think 2019. And the day after, I met Novak again, and he told me I was reading to Tara and Stefan on Facetime, and I was like, oh, Aww. so cute. So one day they'll meet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, um, point is, I was spending some money for that, but for concert, it's not that expensive because a band does a tour maybe once or twice a year. You know, back then it was like forty pounds a concert. You know, in London, maybe I would go to Birmingham as well because it's not too far, etc. But that's it, eighty pounds, and that's it. You know, why tennis? It's another story. <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, it's that's how that's how I was like. Hold on, I have to go to see Novak. And also McFly was having a break, a huge break, you know. So then they went for with Mike first, but that's another story. <laughs> so so going back to Rafael Nadal, because I know you touched on him a second ago. And I feel like it is good to speak about him a little bit because your initial uh, impression of him was he's this, this sweaty Spaniard uh, tearing it up on the clay courts. How has your opinion yeah. changed from then to now? Has it got better? Has it got worse? What's your what's your view on what Rafael Nadal has been able to do since then and where he is right now? The grunting is still annoying me, if that's your question. Okay. <laughs> like I find it very difficult to watch him um, um, in terms of sounds. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know. But I mean, Rafa is an amazing champion. You, you won't get any hate from me towards Rafa. Um, of course, I'm not a huge fan of some things he said about Novak, especially in Australia 2022. But, you know, that's his choice, his opinion. I disagree with it. Um, but, you know, like I always say, you know, Novak without Rafa and Roger wouldn't exist. Rafa without Novak and Roger wouldn't exist. And Roger without Rafa and Novak wouldn't exist. Like the big three is a thing. And also Andy, you know, and also yeah, Stan. Yeah. You know, like we can't just, you know, in terms of numbers, there's no doubt of who's the greatest of all time. And in my opinion, also the greatest probably athlete of, of all time. You know, there's only one. Can only be Novak. Sorry, buddy. But um, you can't, like, Novak wouldn't break these records if Rafa had not pushed these records. You know, he says it. He says that Rafa is his greatest opponent, you know. So all yeah, respect. They've all pushed each other so much. And it's been a very, it's been an incredible generation for us to all witness in tennis. And I have a lot Absolutely. of admiration for, for Novak as well. He's not necessarily my favourite player. I am a Rafa fan. But still, I have respect for what Novak's done. And it's difficult now to look at the, the tennis landscape and suggest that he's not the the greatest player because he's done everything statistically mm. and as an athlete i would agree i think he is the greatest athlete too because i just find what he's doing at his age as well year yeah. after year is pushing the boundaries yeah. and i thought last year was one of the best years i've seen him i mean you were very then- privileged to take your sabbatical last year it was a good decision mm-hmm. in hindsight because was this one of his best seasons? And do you have like a favorite moment of 2023? You know, actually about that, because uh, you know, I, I I definitely have lucky stars, is that I knew I had this sabbatical since end of October and in uh, November, 2021. Okay. So obviously when the whole Australia 2022 happened, I knew I was still going a year later. 
But I thought Novak was not going to go. And I remember in October 2022, I went to Belgrade and I said to Novak, I need to speak to you, please. <laughs> and I was like, it's not about you, nothing bad. I just, you know, need to speak to you in, in private, which I had never asked him before. And he said, okay. And I told him, Novak, I'm going to Australia. And he was so sweet because he grabbed my arm and he was like, you're going? And I said, I am. And he said, I'm so happy. <laughs> I was like, oh. But he didn't know yet that the ban was overturned. He was like, he told me back then, he was like, I have very good um, signs from his lawyers in Australia. But he, he wasn't sure yet. And actually it was announced when he was in Torino. And I remember calling my mom, being like, Novak's going to be there. <laughs> Because I was so scared that, you know, going there, because a sabbatical is not something I'm going to be able to do anytime soon if I don't change jobs. Like it's, and even my school is kind of, you know, big private schools offer that, but it's not an opportunity to have very often. So, you know, I really had my lucky stars. In terms of a favorite moment, I'm going to say top two. I'm going to say top two because I have to. But seeing him winning Australia, you know, was was I mean of course you also had what had happened the year before that made it even more special you had me being there the first two weeks because it uh, sorry the first two weeks the, the whole two weeks because it was the first time I was able to be there a whole tournament because usually as in a whole slam because usually I have work so Wimbledon I have work usually one week um the first week so I may be able to go if he's playing second or third or not you know French Open I'm always off only one week or the other you know and US Open, same thing. I go always go back to work on the 1st of September. So, you know, it was the first time I was able to watch the slam. Also, obviously, what had happened the year before with his injury, because there was this injury at the thigh that, you know, I was like, hmm, you know, and I, I could hear from other people around him, you know, it was not a little thing. You know, he had to deal with it. And the whole, you know, like, the yeah, with what had happened the year before, the fact that for me it was the first time and probably the only time that I was going to see Novak play in Australia. It was very emotional, you know, and of course the camera caught me, you know, but I literally had a meltdown. I heard Novak cry. I, I could hear him because he was not far away from me. And I literally let it all out myself. Like I was, then I, I remember just like putting my head up and I wasn't sure where he was. I had not seen him walking. And then I thought he was still there, but I was just crying my eyes out, you know. And also a couple of weeks before in Adelaide, he called out my name in public, which was one of the greatest honors ever you know so australia but melbourne was very special but then how can i not mention novak giving me the trophy at the french open i, I mean say that you know like that is because you know as a fan like obviously you make a list in your head of things you would love to do like you know get an autograph get a selfie of course with a tennis player play tennis with them you know not that there's a list but you do dream you know you dream yeah. But sometimes you don't even think about some things, you know, like because it just, you know, and and the trophy is not something I ever dream, dreamt of, you know, like I never thought, oh, hold on, I'd love Novak to pass me the trophy. <laughs> like, Does it surprise never. you how, like, giving he is to all of his fans? But considering he is the best tennis player ever, I don't think we've ever seen this, like, side of generosity from a top, even top sportsman. Like, I just think like, I I've, it's crazy. Yeah, like I, 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 I am not sure if people actually do realize if, if people in the like mainstream people do realize how down to earth Novak is. Like, I, if you wouldn't, like, if you don't know who he is and, and let's say the amount of money that he has, you know, you wouldn't be able to, to guess it by the way he behaves or by the way like he dresses, what like you know, he's a very down to earth guy. He's he, he's really humble, and he he's a guy who, like, who loves people. I always hear like you know that he wants people to love him. I don't think that's the case. I think he loves people. He loves the human contact. You know, he he loves hearing stories from people. He's you know, he's yeah, very very gentle and humble. You know, like he he does care about you know, like your stories, if you're well, et cetera, and whether or not he sees you often. And he's also very good, like, um, he remembers very well names and faces, especially faces, you know, because I've seen him not long ago with a fan and I, I actually introduced her. 
And he was like, but we've met before, haven't we? And he actually remembered because he had met her a few months and a year before, you know. So, yeah, he's he's so humble. And, you know, the, like, he's so grateful to his fans always. Like, you know, he says it all the time how, you know, and also the fact that the fact he does challenges and then he likes and reposts and replies, you know, like, find me another athlete who does that. And it's not like people, some people would say it's for PR. It's not. It's just Novak being Novak. Like, it really is. You well, know, and on the court with him as well. This is the yeah. next thing I wanted to ask you about. Yes. Something that is beyond like every Djokovic fan's yeah. wildest dreams. Just when you posted the first, I think it's a couple of times this year as well, which yeah, is even like, more crazy. Like when yeah. I saw the first one, I was like, no way. She's on the court, <laughs> hit him with Djokovic. We did get What's to play coming? with Sebastian Ofner this year, but it's not quite a Novak Djokovic. <laughs> <laughs> Still pretty cool though. Um, I yeah, it happened twice. So it happened two years ago in a couple of well, October in October. Um, both times I did ask for it <laughs> because the first time what happened is what I was watching his practice in Belgrade that he had invited me to. Um, because, you know, I want to precise that so that people know me, like, oh my gosh, she's going everywhere. Like, you know, no, no, no. He invited me to come and watch it because he knew I was around. And um, at some point, um, I don't know, like he was he was having a chat with Victor Troigi and Novak was like, Julie, do you know how many weeks I, I am number one? Because that was a time where every, like, I mean, at the moment as well, but he had broken the record of uh, 310 and he was, you know, and then in my head, I started panicking. And then I was like, hold on. If I have the right one, what do I win? And he was like, what do you want? I said, I want to play with you right now. And funnily enough, I don't know why I had a vibe, but I was dressed. Like I was ready, you know. And uh, he was like, okay. And actually, I got the two weeks wrong. Oh, I, was <laughs> so I, say. I, I put two weeks forward because it was the guaranteed one, I think. I was going to make know, a joke saying, I bet you're glad you didn't get it wrong. That you, it I did. Like you did. Yeah. <laughs> and then the people, so there was Marco Paniki, there was a gentleman who's a physio from his um, previous, Novak's previous tennis center that's closed since then. And there was Victor Troiki, and they pretended to have a little committee to decide whether, of my fate, of whether or not I was going to play with Novak. And they turned around, they were like, no, no. And I looked at Novak, I think I was a bit like for a couple of seconds when Novak was like, okay, she's panicking because clearly my answer is going to be yes. <laughs> So Novak picked up another rack and he was like, let's go, let's do it. I was like, okay. Because, you know, it was like, if it's not happening now, I can never ask this again. Never. <laughs> so we played. And then uh, last October, I was with another lady called Boyana, who's um, a Serbian tennis player. I mean, she was injured. She's trying to come back. But um, she does a lot of social media. And we met because um, she participated in the promotion of the books that I contributed to. So um, we were at the book fair together every day. And um, Boyana said, shall we go and watch Novak's practice together? Because it's a public place, you know, any, anyone can go. So the, And it's very nice, well, um, well done because the courts are like downstairs and you've got a little cafe above and with glass, you know, so you can, you can see the practice. It's really cool. And um, when Novak arrived, I had not seen him since uh, the Davis Cup in Valencia. And, uh, you know, he greeted me, asked me how I was, and, you know, like, we had a chat. And uh, as a joke, I said, because he saw that Boyana was dressed as, as dressed as well, and um, she had her rackets. And I said, well, yeah, we thought that maybe you needed sparring partners. <laughs> and he was like, are you going to watch the practice? And I said, of course, we are going to be, you know, in the, in the gallery, you know. And he was like, okay, so I'll wave to you at the end. And it was so sweet, because at the end, you know, he literally turned around, and he was like... <laughs> So then he had um he had a bodyguard around, but he obviously had us three, and then he knows us, you know. Yeah. So yeah, and then we had two um two other friends coming with us who were filming. So including Tony, who's my um who's the mastermind behind the books that I collaborated on, and then Urosh, who films for Serbian TV as well. So he's friends as well with Boyana, and it was then it was so funny because Novak was ready and I was like, "Sir, how are we doing this, Julie?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh, you want me to bust around? <laughs> sure." <laughs> I was like, first Boyana, because you know your level right now is right here. You have to go here for Boyana, and then you have to go here for me. <laughs> so that's how we did it, and it was it was amazing. Like I can't. It's just in a way, it's very. I don't know how to explain. In a way, it feels so surreal because it's Novak, it's my idol, and it's the greatest tennis player of all time, the greatest athlete of all time. But at the same time, he's so down to earth and so normal that even though I do 
see him as like, wow, I also do see him as Novak, who's like just a brother to me, you know? So it's just, I don't know. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. Like, I'm like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's super special. Like, it's super special. Surreal, I, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. So that's absolutely crazy. Have you ever sat and watched uh, a match with him? Because I've I've heard some other stories of him going to some of these like events where he's just there in person. He's not playing, and then there'll be yeah. some some tennis on the TV, and he'll give his thoughts on the match as it's going on. Because for me, that would be like incredible watching him commentate on other professional tennis players yeah. and where he where he thinks they're serving that type of thing. Yeah, it's yeah. very in his mind. It's uh, yeah, no, it's I haven't a- done I haven't done this. I have seen him because in his tennis center, there used to be TV with tennis on. Sometimes it was live, sometimes replay. Well, you know, I can see him like just, you know, having a little look. But uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> I've, listen, I'm, I'm going to think of this now to sit with Novak and watch a tennis match together. <laughs> it's another one for the list, I think, <laughs> yeah. to, to tick off one day. <laughs> list um, that doesn't exist, by the way. You know, like I don't want people to have well, that. Hopefully he's just in the tournaments to the very end, so you won't get the chance to do it. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a question. So out of all of the Djokovic achievements over the years, is there one what stands out to you? Hmm. I mean, we're so lucky and so spoiled. Yeah. That literally, I'm like, which one? <laughs> you know. Uh, okay, here's the answer I'm gonna I'm gonna give the um, the one he hasn't achieved yet. <laughs> okay which is what? so that you know we don't know because you know you can push the record so far monte carlo <laughs> next year that's a big one monte carlo is a big one well we could get to the the three times golden masters if he wins it but so, for me it's quite big. not the one of 2024 well you might win another three slams that'd be quite big as well well the olympics is massive as well yeah. and it's in france yeah, as think... well so i feel for julia that could be one of the biggest things right and in the summer, I don't work. So. Ah, perfect. <laughs> well, I hate to upset you, Julie, but Rafa should be there for the Olympics as well. And we that know... doesn't upset me at all. I <laughs> want to that to be him. With, uh, with Roland Garros, because it's, it's going to be at Roland Garros, right? Playing yeah. on the on the clay courts. Would you but yeah, I'm not the type favorite? of fan who wants to avoid other players. Not at all. Mm. Bring them on. I want Novak to beat them. You know, I'm not like that. I, I'm... You know, I, I'm not avoiding um, the conflict, you know, not the opposite. You know, I do want Novak to beat Rafa and Claire again, you know, for sure. He's the only one who's done it twice, you know, so. Which player on times. which player on tour do you fear the most for Novak Djokovic to play in a, in a final? But depends which tournament. So on like, clay it would be Rafa, but say on a hard court at the US Open, which, what's the most well, feared player right now? I was nervous against Daniil. Yeah. I was nervous because I was scared of another 2021. You know. He played great as well in the first set. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, I mean, it depends. Also, like at the moment, Yannick. You know, but I mean, with the off season, you never know. In Australia, everything is always kind of you know everyone's refreshed. So you know, it's um, to be honest, I, I, and I'm not saying this in um pretentious way at all because I know Novak has got all the numbers but if Novak is fully mentally and physically on point there's no one to fear you know there's no one I agree with that I actually do agree Um, with that I think if he's playing at his best and there's no uh, physical issues mentally he's there and he's up for it then nobody can really beat him on any any surface I do think the one which is the toughest for him would be uh, Roland Garros with Rafael Nadal because if Rafael Nadal is playing at A level, I don't think Djokovic, even at his best, will be able to beat him. Uh, but that's the only thing. I, I think it's fair again, you know, but can Rafa come back at his top? You know, that's... Yeah, and and Rafa also in the final because I do believe in 2021 that in the semis, Rafa was fine, you know. Yeah. Of course, at, towards the end, we're starting seeing the foot, but he never had an issue with the foot during the, you know, five previous rounds. So, you know, um, I think that... Actually, I always use that match in that third set as someone like, you know, I've got colleagues who might not watch tennis, but uh, some once I had a colleague asking me, like, if I were to start watching tennis, what would you suggest me to watch? And I was like, that third set have a look at that because in my opinion the level is just like every point you're like 
who's going to take it, you know, better another and level, better. Isn't it? Another planet they're playing on. Exactly. And also because, you know, there was the, how do you call this, like the restrictions. So, you know, the crowd was allowed to stay. Like there was such a special atmosphere. My friend was there actually and FaceTimed me. Oh, that's cool. And it was just mental. I mean, of course I could hear it on TV, but still like, you know, it was, it was mental, wasn't it? You know, that match was just crazy. And then of course the final against Stefano was where he's like two sets down. And I'm like, Ah, you know, I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, from my sofa, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I think the moment he won that third one, though, everything sort of seemed a little bit calm and there was a lot of people yeah. thinking, okay. I think everyone saw it. His... Everyone was like, yeah. oh, he's coming back, he's winning yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it was just after the, after he won the third, I was like, okay, now he's going to be okay now. I feel yeah. his big favourite to win this match. To come back to your question, I think the slams has to be probably the most important because, you know, he's, he's pushing the record. He's definitely, I, I think, not done pushing the record, you know, further and further. So, you know, and it, it's special, you know, it's, it's, yeah. But I mean, there's the masters, there's the weeks at number one, like everything is combined, isn't it? Like, you know, 40 masters, like three, 400 and I think five next Monday. 405 yes, crazy it's it's mental it's like above seven years do we realize like it's it's insane I mean, like that's so why he's you know, taking all of them i feel like he should leave some records for other people as no well. that's okay, all. Buddy. like you know you can take more and then you know <laughs> it's okay it's you okay can't take all of them surely not every record but it seems like it's going to be the case well there's i think the consecutive weeks number one that he can't have now like i don't think he can beat rogers yeah. one you know too but, tough that it's okay. Roger can keep that one. <laughs> they see that we're going. The next generous. He's leaving that one to Roger. <laughs> Very nice of him. So yeah, he I'll, I'll, of, uh... not have how many Roland Garros? Don't have that. So that well, I can keep that one. He might and might play like until fifty. <laughs> <laughs> With Djokovic, you could never rule anything past him. I mean, True. talking about the end for him. I mean, it is a bit of a sour topic, but. When is that? When is that going to be? I mean, we're not sure. We'll have to wait and see what happens with him. It seems like it's going to be. We've got many more years left, in my mm. opinion. Um, but for you, when Djokovic is to retire, are you still going to be a big tennis fan? Is there another player you feel yourself already like the new players coming through who you'd warm to and be a big fan of? I'll always be a tennis fan. I was a fan of tennis before being a fan of Novak. It's my favorite sport. I love playing it. I love watching it. Of course, you know, supporting Novak has made me love that sport even more. And actually, my love of tennis came back thanks to Novak because it had left for um, sad personal reasons. But that's also why I, I feel like I owe so much to Novak because he's brought me back that love, which for me on a personal level, which, you know, um, it, I, I, I cannot describe and explain how grateful I am towards him for that. So I'll always love tennis, you know, but I, I, I don't think I can admire um, an athlete at the same level as Novak. It's just not possible. Uh, you know, I, Novak has my respect, admiration, you know, so much. Um, I'll carry on watching tennis, of course, when Novak... Would you, you still know, go I, to live matches? Or? No, not as no. much. I'll go to some. What about if he's a coach? What about, sorry? If he's a coach of one of the other players. So my bank account needs to rest. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. But, you know, if I do, like, let's imagine he's a coach of a player, I don't know, player one, okay? I'll go to support player one but because Novak is the coach. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely, I hope it will be a player one that I like, you know, as a person as well. Because it's, it's not only the player, it's also the person, you know? And I think that's also why so many Novak fans, you know, like there's so many of us, in Nolan Hamilton, because we love his personality and because he's so kind, you know, coming back to the down to earth and humble. But no, it can it can never be the same. I don't think I genuinely don't think so. You and know, you never know. You could still be watching a Djokovic in fifteen years because Stefan Djokovic is quite <laughs> good with a racket as well. Yes, yes. But even with Stefan, as much as I, you know, probably will support him as a player, it will not be the same. You know, it will not be the same. And you know, I, I do believe also my life at some point will um, change in a trajectory where I'll probably have less time, you know. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's 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 all good. I'm, of course, the day that Novak will retire will be tough, you know, and and 
I, I always say, you know, I, I hope that he will give us enough notice so that anyone can sort of go to a tournament to say goodbye. But I have no idea, because so far he doesn't know the date for sure. I have no idea if he has an idea of how he wants to go, of, you know, what he wants to do. I, I, I know nothing about that. That's just my, my personal hope. And of course it will be hard, you know, but, you know, at the same time, we know it's not going to last. That's, you know, and already he's playing much more than what, what one could have thought for. You know, in 2017, I was really scared, you know, so I think everything now is bonus. And that's why I'm like, it's just enjoy. hearing him speak, he said that it's all dependent on when he stops winning slams. If he's, if he's still going yeah. there and competing with the very best, with these young players coming through and beating them, he's got no reason to retire. He loves the sport and he's going to keep going for as long as he's able to. And the way his body is, you'd think that could be for quite a few more years because, yeah. I mean, the way he is so flexible and his movement is just something I've never seen in any sport, really. If he doesn't pick up big injuries, you know, um, if he keeps the motivation, if the family supports him, still supports him the way, you know, they do at the moment and they've been doing for years, then, you know, so far, and if he keeps winning, like, I'm, I mean, as you said, like, someone not long ago said on Twitter, I think, or X, someone said, oh, he should leave right now that he's on top of it. And I'm like, what? Like, I was like, absolutely not. The guy just won three slams out of four. Wasn't the final of the fourth. You know, like, why would he leave right now? Of course not. You know, like, keep keep pushing the records. And, you know, that's what's great with Novak as well, is that he's got this incredible, you know, mental strength where he's like, he's finding other, you know, records to beat. Or, you know, he's like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. You know, so, and, yeah, why stop? Like, you know, let's keep going. Would you say the incident in Australia in 2022, was that the lowest ever period for all Djokovic fans? I hope there won't be another low one. <laughs> but I, yeah, mean, when, yeah. well, I mean, by not for obviously future, just everything what's happened so yeah, yeah, far. Yeah. Is that the lowest time? It has to be. Time? It yeah. has to be. The way, you know, I, I don't want to go back into the whole thing, but, you know, if you look at it objectively, um, you know, like the way Novak was treated was not okay. And, you know, the way that the, the Australian government changed their laws whilst Novak was flying, just because they saw the public reception of it, um, it's not okay the way he was treated, you know, the way that, you know, he was in that sort of, it's not a hotel, in that refugee hotel camping. Like, it's not okay, you know. In, and then the public humiliation and the way he was... It was terrible. It, the way he was being used as, you know, a horrible man, you know, all around the world, the, the lies spread about him. That's what I found really hard is... You know, when you know the truth and you know what he thinks or said, you know, and yet the media reports something, you know, completely different that makes him look like a horrible man when he's not like that. And, you know, and also, you know, I, I said that back then, but I say it again. Has anyone thought about his mental health, about his exactly. family's mental health? Has anyone thought about that? You know, like, luckily, it made me, no, <clears throat> it made me support him more, though. Like yeah. it, the fact that he came through all of that and he had to do those interviews on BBC and stuff. I yeah. thought the fact that he stuck, like, uh, stuck to his guns and said, no, I'm not going to play. I'll still achieve the most slams. I thought, respect to you. Like not many yeah. people would have bowed. Well, most people would have bowed yeah. down and just gone, all right, give me the vaccine. He was like, yeah, no, yeah. fair play I, to him. I have a friend. Um, she's, she's, a, she's a Rafa fan, actually. And uh, she was very vocal of how she didn't like Novak. Um, just because of him breaking rackets. Like, she was very vocal about how his attitude on court, she didn't like it. And, you know, that's that's a fair point. I can understand that some people don't like it. I love it, but I'm respecting everyone's opinions. And when all of this happened, she actually texted me, and she was like, I respect Novak even more now by the fact, the fact he's still saying, no, I'm not going to take the vaccine, you know, because she was like, he could literally lie about it. He could, you know, say he's had it, but actually not like, you know, literally there would have been so many ways out of all of this, you know, and actually I think you're right. I think he gained the respect of so many people because also the way he was treated by being so honest, you know, um, yeah, he definitely gained the respect of so many people as for us, Novak fans. Yeah. I think, you know, for me, it was, it was traumatizing. It was traumatizing. It was, you know, like, because also, 
I had loads of chats with different people. You know, I also had a little bit of the, you know, the backstage. And yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. Did you ever get any access to him, like through message or his family? No, I, I never, area? like, you, never you know, tried. something I, I'm happy to clarify in, in, um, in uh, public is that I don't talk to Novak um, uh, when I don't see him at tournaments. I don't talk to Novak. You know, I, he doesn't message me on Instagram. I don't have his phone number. Like, I don't have direct wealth contact, no. Um, but I did see him uh, three weeks after he came back. I went to Belgrade. And I knew he had the BBC interview the day after I arrived. And I was super lucky and privileged to have a one-on-one -on -one chat then with him for 15 minutes, oh. um, where he talked me through some things and also how he had felt and also how he had, you know, he was ready for the day after for the interview. I also saw him straight after the interview, um, literally when he walked out of the room, you know, um, and I could see the relief. I think, you know, there was so much... But, you know, like, once again, you have to keep in mind everything you had to go through. Like, imagine, like, literally your face is everywhere being labeled as anti-vax when he's never, you know, The villain. They're trying to make him into the villain. Exactly. The villain, the one who was trying to enter a country illegally. Like, I mean, what on earth? Like, you know, like, Terrible. It, it was, it went too, it went too far. It went way too far. And, yeah, for us, yeah. As I said, it was traumatizing. Like, and also... Going back to Australia 2023, my tears, you know, the, when I collapsed, it was definitely because, you know, the page, the, the circle was done, you know, like in a good way, it was over. But it was super tough. It was super tough. I remember because I was just going back to work. The, so the day they locked him up was I was going back to work the next morning and all my colleagues were coming to see me because they were checking in on me like, Literally, I had, it was the first two days, there was no students, we were just doing in set, you know, but I had my phone, like, it was, it was insane. Like, I, I still don't understand how they made him go through all of that, how all of this happened. Like, how come we were all watching, a, like, a, a court something, like, where they were speaking, whether his lawyer at some point gave a speech for, like, I don't know how long, like, I was just like, what is happening to all of us watching this? Like, what on earth? Like, yeah, it was insane. Yeah, it was definitely a bizarre period. I mean, mm. it all happened also, quite fast really, as well. Really, I don't, can't say hurt me, but what made me lose some faith in some human beings and is how some people were happy that this was happening. Like, I was just like, you literally have no consideration for a human being regardless of what you think of him, regardless of who's your favorite. Take a step back, take some perspective. Do you realize what's being done to a human being? Do you literally have no compassion and empathy? Like what on earth? And still up to today, like I, like the way some people are convinced that Novak tried to enter the country, you know, like illegally. And it's it, that is worrying, you know? And at the same time, you also have some people, when I went to Australia and I'm, I met a lot of people, you know, because I did loads of sightseeing and stuff. And I was explaining always how, you know, I was here primarily, you know, to do my research, but also to watch tennis. I had some Australians apologizing, you know, to me and being like, I hope Novak forgives us at some point, you know? And well, the I was news like, should I say that over there as well, because the news anchors in Australia were horrible, said some horrible mm -hmm. things about him. Mm -hmm. And on the news mm -hmm. as well. I mean, it's disgusting, yeah. really. Like, yeah, they're yeah. professionals. I agree. I agree. And, um, but not only in Australia, you know, like not long ago, Novak did a, a TV show in France. And back then there's one of the guys who had said horrible stuff, you know, and I'm like, oh, Novak has, but you know, I, I want to use it in a way like, I'm like him being so forgiving should be an inspiration to me, you know, being the bigger person. I want, I want to see this way, you know, I want to be like, cause Otherwise, you can just reminisce forever and just try and you know, have that anger and stuff. And personally, as I said, it's traumatizing. Usually, I never speak about it because, you know, you know like, I'm like, it's done, dusted, over, you know. But now that we're talking about it, yeah, it was traumatizing. It was awful. There are some people, what they said, what they did and stuff. I forgive, but don't forget. And, um, yeah, you know, that that's it. Yeah, on to more positive things. Of course, after that, he had a fantastic season. Um well, in 2023, what are your hopes and aspirations and what do you think is realistic for Djokovic to achieve in 2024? Golden Slam. 
<laughs> realistic. I mean, it probably is with him. I That's mean, to be honest, <laughs> it is. You could tell it of anyone else, and they, you'd probably yeah. laugh at them and say, "Come on, realistic." But with Djokovic, I feel yeah, he can do things what no one else seems to. But for you, what would you say? Would you only be happy with a Golden Slam? Would I be happy with a Golden you'd Slam? You'd only be happy with that. Surely there must be oh, like no. a bench. You'd, you'd be yeah. happy with a few slams, right? And to be honest, can I demand anything? Who am I to be happy with anything? You know what I mean? I'm not on the court. I'm not the one doing the sacrifices and stuff. I think at the moment it's just bonus. Of course, you know, I, I'd love for him to push the um, slam records further. Of course, I would love him to win, you know, the gold medal. I think that's the one, you know, I um, personally that I would really go for, you know, because I know how much he wants it. Um, but even if he's got, you know, nothing, uh, Novak was still my favorite player ever, you know, and he will stay the goat. So let's let's hope for the best. I think, you know, um, here's what I'm hoping for. There we go. Let's be, you know, um, I'm hoping for um, him to carry on playing. You know, okay. that's because once again, how long is all of this going to last? You know, in, in in five, six, seven years time, I think it's realistic to say he won't play anymore. So let's enjoy it. But, you know, I I have very good vibes and hopes for this season. I'm going to put two scenarios in front of you. I would like you to pick one okay. of them. So for okay. next season, he wins two Grand Slams or he wins no Grand Slams and the Olympics. <laughs> ah... I like that. Ooh, it's a tough one. I think I'll go for the gold medal. Okay. I'll so go it's... for the gold medal because he's mentioned it so much. And also, at the same time, he always puts so much pressure on himself. So, you know, I'm like, can Maybe you do don't it? play the doubles this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> don't don't make me comment on that. I know, don't. It was he was pushing himself a bit too far, I think, with the doubles on top of all the other tournaments. I think he wanted to give a chance to that other player. I think you know sure. he wanted yeah. to. I be think like, so too. I think it was all from good intentions, and when all it is completely. for for Serbia, it's like it's yeah, that extra incentive you, for sure. Exactly, but at the same time, the extra pressure as well that he puts on himself. You know. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to pick the gold medal because I know we're talking about it so much. It's happening in France, in Paris, you know, on a personal level. I'm from France, you know, so. Um, but to be honest, if you're telling me no gold medal and two slams, I'll be over the moon too, you know. So imagine pushing to 26, you know, that would be amazing. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I, I, you know what? I think the two well. scenarios combined. And in a year time, you can, you know, talk about this two slams and one gold medal. Actually, no, four slams, one gold medal. There we go. That would be, well, surely just ride off into the sunset after that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, we'll get you on next year, Julia. Maybe we can discuss to see how we got on with the Olympics and the slams. But I think we'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's been Thanks, a real Julia. pleasure Having getting me. to know you. And uh, hopefully everyone listening at home really got to enjoy some of Julia's insights. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. And uh, also go uh, follow Julie. You can see the the little, what's it called? The app, the, the user that? tag. The there. username, the username. The username. Fan. End Jocko fan. So go follow on Instagram and Twitter. Anything you want to add, Julie? Idemo nole. Okay, idemo. Come on. <laughs>